welcome back to my channel. My name is Vivian on this channel. I talk about everything, nursing, lifestyle, motherhood, beauty, and all that good stuff. Today, I'm talking about applying for your tier two visa. So I get a lot of people asking me questions and asking, what column is this when applying for their visas? And like, okay, I get it. It can be confusing at times, but then it's simple and straightforward. So let's listen to the end of this video. Applying for a tattoo visa, you already have a job offer from a valid A plus sponsor. A plus sponsor is a sponsor who is able to give you sponsorship to apply for a visa. Most NHS sponsors and care homes are A sponsors, so don't be afraid. Now you must have gotten a valid job offer from a tier A sponsor. Who is a sponsor who is able to sponsor for your visa? Now. CIA sponsors apply for a COS, which now is unlimited for doctors and nurses, and they pay a sum of one thousand pounds a year for you. Okay, so every for every one year you work in the UK, your employer has to pay the UK government one thousand pounds. So for the three years you're going to come to the UK, your employer has paid the UK government three thousand pounds. So think about that when you are thinking of taking a job offer or refusing. A job at the level of a COS so it's not gonna be right for you to refuse a job at the level of the COS when your employer has already paid three thousand pounds for you so that's one thing for you to think about now you have to be eligible to apply you must have had a job offer you have a proof of English which has now changed previously you had to do a UKVI English test but for now even if you had uh, the IELTS exam which you had for your NMC registration is going to cover you for your UK VI application. So you do not need to do a UK VI IELTS anymore. So if you have academic IELTS results or an OET result, that should serve for your English. And you actually need to prove your English for just the level 4. So and we already passed our IELTS at level 7. So you're good to go on the English ground. You must provide your certificate of sponsorship. Like I said, it's just a figure. And a combination of letters certificate of sponsorship your proof of english language and you need to prove that you have a valid offer your offer letter and you have to show that you have been paid an appropriate salary usually your certificate of sponsorship your employer is going to say how much they're going to pay you so the uk government is able to see that for nurses who are under the shortage occupation they money which your employer has to pay you is lower compared to other occupations usually the cap for the fee they should pay people is thirty-five thousand pounds but nurses like we know are paid twenty-four thousand. the uk vi understands this and you do not need to worry about that part that money is appropriate for your job as a pre-registered nurse coming to the uk who has gotten their visa and even when you get your full pay and get to be paid twenty-four thousand. Because before you come, you're offered something about between the range of twenty to twenty-two thousand, and when you get your pin, you're paid about twenty-four thousand. It's still within range because UKVI understands that that's the money that nurses have been paid, and then they are needed because they are in the shortage occupation. So you do not need to prove that you're paid thirty-five thousand if that makes sense, which is the money that every other employer needs to pay people who they have to sponsor to come to the UK. So for nurses. They have to prove that they have an appropriate salary, which is the normal salary that is paid in the UK, registered nurses, and £24,000 for registered nurses when you get your pay. You have to have a personal savings of about £945 in your account. Now, you do not need to have this money in your account if you have been sponsored by your employer. So your employer is going to tick up that they are going to sponsor you and then you just have to apply you do not need to prove that you have this personal savings of 945 pounds in your account in the last three months so if you're applying as a nurse coming to the uk don't worry about not having 945 pounds in your account your employer is going to take that off and you do not need to prove that to the uk vi you need to show that you can travel which is by having an international passport and they are not banned from traveling to the uk and your travel history for the last five years so if you're somebody who has been traveling in and out of the country you need to prove that you do not have any troubles where you've traveled all over the world and this you have to do by showing them a police certificate now you need a police certificate anywhere you've lived in the last six months 
so if you're coming from nigeria you have to have a nigerian police certificate if you have traveled to us in the last six months you need to have to be on a safe side anywhere you have traveled in recent time you just need a police certificate that you have lived in these places and you did not have any problem with the law that's basically like basically it because you need to know that you're in good standing in the law so ensure you have a police certificate of anywhere that you have lived in the last six months also be ready to show all your travel histories by your tickets or via your travel visas or via your international passports showing that you have been to this also so and so countries and you also need to have done a tuberculosis test because everyone who's going to live in the uk for more than six months needs to have a tuberculosis test which is negative now in nigeria i do know that this is done and you are given a certificate, usually you do an x-ray. For children, they necessarily do not need to expose your child to x-ray. They ask a few questions for your children or your um, your dependent children. And if they are happy with the questions and if you do not have any cough in the last three months or two weeks, they are happy to sign that certificate for you. You pay for this testing and then you are given a certificate that says that you are free of tuberculosis and that you can travel to UK safely. So you need that certificate also included in your application also the same if you are bringing your family to the uk you need to submit that tuberculosis application for your family all right so you need to submit the birth certificate marriage certificate tuberculosis tests and then their travel histories and police certificates of where they have lived in the last six months or in the last year all their travel histories you need to submit all that to the uk bi government when you're applying for a visa for your family members. And you need to provide a criminal record certificate like I mentioned. You need to get a police certificate from your home country, Nigeria, Philippines, Ghana, name it. Anywhere that you have been, even if it's the US you have lived in, you need a police certificate. If you have lived in the UK, you need a DBS certificate. <laughs> but anyway, you don't need a DBS because you're not, you're not in the UK already. So if you're in your home country, you need a criminal certificate, a police criminal certificate, and this will definitely show that you have no record and you're in good standing by the law and then the UKBI will be happy to proceed with your application and the certificate will basically say that you have not been aired, you've not aired and if you had any issues with the government or the police the school to just say it clearly so they weigh the options and see if it's something they can accept to come to their country and if it's not they're gonna let you know on what you need to do and this police this police certificate is basically for people who are going to be working with children elderly people and adults they are called the vulnerable groups in the uk so if you're going to be working with children and you know as doctors and nurses we work with children and adults and elderly groups vulnerable groups in general so if you're going to work with them you need that clearance certificate from the police to prove that you have no issues or any troubles by the law it's if you are applying from the following countries you do not need to prove english if you are applying from australia bahamas barbados belize canada grenada guyana jamaica new zealand st Kitts and nevis st lucia st vincent and grenadines and trinidad and tobacco and the usa you may not have to prove your english language but from every other country you need to have your english certificate so um, even if you studied in Trinidad or whatever if you are from another country you need to prove your english if that makes sense for your visa what you can do you can have a second job and you can work up to 20 hours though during the um covid pandemic you do not need don't have any limit on the work hours but i know after the pandemic is over that restriction will be placed back so for now if you are under a visa you can work as much as you like but after the pandemic i'm sure it's going to reverse if it doesn't reverse they will let us know so you can work 20 hours have a second job but before you have a second job you must have resumed your first job that gave you sponsorship with your employer before you get a second job and you can work for up to 20 hours or more during the pandemic on a tier 2 visa and then you can also bring your children or your family on a tier 2 visa and then on a tattoo visa you can also have children you can multiply however once you have children on a tattoo visa if you travel outside of the uk during your five year stay or during the course of a visa for every new child that you deliver while in the uk you need a new visa or permit for them 
so you need to apply for a dependent visa if you are going to take them in and out of the uk however if you're going to stay in the uk with them till your five years and your application for indefinitely to remain you do not need to apply for a visa for them you just wait until when you're applying for indefinitely leave to remain and then apply for their citizenship or their ILR as the case may be you are going to extend your visa while you're in the uk and you're still working for your present employer you do not need to go through all the whole process again you just need to submit your application go for your biometrics and get your brp delivered to you however if you are changing employer you need to apply all over there again provide your english documents provide your certificate of sponsorship provide everything that you need to provide and then wait for your new brp and you cannot start a new job until you have your present brp so you have to wait and ensure that you have your visa before you leave your old job so most people just leave their job and then they have a lot of gap within their employment which is not good for your indefinite leave to remain so if you're going to switch to a new employer make sure you have your cos you've applied for your visa and you're waiting for your visa to come and if possible work until your new visa comes and then when your new visa comes you retire you resign and then go on to work with your new employer so you don't have any problems or any gap in your employment and you have to apply all over again as if you're applying for a new visa but if you are still with your same employer and you're just extending your visa to stay in the uk you don't need to do the whole process all over again but you need to submit your biometrics or put the document through the online services by the uk cas make an appointment with them do your biometrics and wait for your brp to come back to you at your doorstep and you have to be around to pick it up and sign for it they're not going to leave it with anybody it has to be you you who applied is going to be the one to sign and pick it up if you lost your brp the same thing you have to go online pay the fee that you have lost your brp report to the police that you have lost your brp and then apply online and make an appointment submit your biometrics and wait at home for them to bring your brp to you and you have to collect it personally it usually takes about five days if you use a priority service and about eight weeks if you just take the standard service which i'm here anyway so why would i pay more money so eight weeks for standard service or five days for priority service because you can get your decision in about 24 to 48 hours so it depends on how quick you want your decision especially for people who are changing jobs or employment you may want your visa to commence immediately so the best way you can make your visa to come to you immediately is to apply for a priority or a super priority service and when you apply for extension of a visa you have to remain in the uk you do not have to leave the uk if you leave the uk that's a trouble they may stop your application process or your yeah so you have to remain in the uk while you're applying for your visa and when your visa or your brp comes then you can travel out of the uk the same thing for your family members when they are applying to extend their visas they should apply with you if they can if they cannot apply with you it's all the same they also have to submit their biometrics upload the documents online or if you want the partner company to help you apply them you can do it at your biometric appointment upload your documents or do it at your biometric appointment submit your biometrics and wait for your visa decision and they should not travel outside of the uk they have to wait for their visas to come before they travel out of the uk you have to pay your immigration health on charge however like i said when i did go online to apply how much a visa health on charge was for my family i was told i was not going to pay any money i don't know why that is if it was a mistake but i don't think it was a mistake for whatever reason that is well it's good news for me i don't have to pay money so i think there is some logistics to how much you pay for your ihs it depends on your family situation so what i would say is when you're ready to apply go online put your family details and situation as part the questions you're going to be asked and it's going to generate how much you're going to pay for your ihs and if like me you're not going to pay any money good for you go ahead and apply for your visa for your family and renew and extend your visa as the case may be cost for a tier 2 visa if you're applying from outside of the uk or if you're applying from inside the uk is about the same amount because we are on the shortage occupation if you're applying for yourself and your family of three so it's going to be four six four times four pounds even if you're applying from inside or outside of the uk is the same amount so you pay 400 as a four 
pounds per person who is coming to apply for a visa in the UK. And if you're applying for a visa for up to five years, if your employer is willing to pay that £5,000 at the same time, you'll be paying £928. So if you're apl applying to stay for more than three years, which is up to five years, you have to pay £928 for your visa application. So if you're going to pay some of £464 for each person who is applying to come into the UK, and that's how much you need to spend and the IHS has calculated on the UK VI government website and then you pay this monies, put in your supporting documents, apply for your visa and hopefully you will not have any troubles with your tier 2 visa applications or for your tier 2 dependent visa applications. I do wish you all the best in your applications and yeah, see you in the UK. So I hope with this video most of your questions about applying for a visa in the UK has been answered and that your visa applications will now be easier for you and your families thank you for watching as always if you like this video give it a thumbs up like share subscribe and i'll see you all in my next one thank you for watching i love you as always bye for now